Good evening and welcome to Tunbridge Parish Church for a time of Compline at the end of this Sunday. If you'd like to follow along and you don't yet have a service sheet, you can find it on our website at tunbridgeparishchurch.org.uk under resources and prayer. So if you would like to join along with me this evening, you will need to respond with the bits in bold that we'll all say together. And the reading for this evening comes from Romans chapter 9 and it's verses 1 to 13. So before we join together in prayer, let's have a moment of quiet. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We say together, Most merciful God, we confess to you, before the whole company of heaven and one another, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And some words from Psalm 134. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessing out of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. And so now we have our scripture reading. If you'd like to follow along, you can do. Uh, if your version is different to mine, don't worry. But I'll be reading from the NIV 2011 version. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. There's the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. It is not as though God's word had failed, for not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Nor, because they are his descendants, are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebekah's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet, before the twins were born, or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger. Just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated.
there's lots that might have grabbed your attention in that passage. Uh, but we're going to spend a few moments um, considering what Paul says in verse number 8, uh, which if you haven't got a Bible in front of you is, is this. It says, in other words, it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. If we are children, if that's not children, if we're Christian, if that's what we call ourselves, children of God, brothers and sisters of Christ, then we are only so because of the promise that God has made through his son, Jesus Christ. It's not by anything that we've done except to accept that fact and to confess that Jesus is our Lord and be baptised. We weren't physically born into the family of God. All of God's children are thus because of adoption. That's something that we heard in the passage from last week's morning service on Trinity Sunday in Romans 8. And it's also a challenge for us to live in a certain way. It can be really easy to, to live as if we are going to be getting everything if we are born into a situation, or born into a particular family. Hereditary uh, things that may come to you if you're born into wealth or if you're born into titles, you could be fairly certain that those things will come to you. But if you are adopted into a family, if you are brought into something that wasn't yours to start with, then you could still act in that manner. But I think it a more appropriate response to live with an attitude of gratitude towards the one who has brought you into that family. And this is something that Jesus affirms when he challenges the Pharisees, who say that they are the children of Abraham. And he counters them by saying, if God wanted to, he could raise up children for Abraham out of the very ground that they are standing on. God has the power to do that. We can't just say, oh, because we were born into a Christian household or because we go to church or even just because we have been baptised and call ourselves Christian, that we are children of God. I'm not saying that you're not child of God if one of those situations is the one that you're in. That's pretty much where I've been my whole life. Um, but actually we're called to act and to live in a certain way as well. We can't just rest on our laurels. There are ways that we are called to act if we truly are the children of God. To love God, to love our neighbours, to live in gratitude for all God has done for us and continues to do for us and not just us but for all his creation all that he loves so this evening as we come to the end of a week think about the beginning of a new week maybe consider those things that you know are going to be coming up in your week those places you'll be those people you'll be seeing and consider how God might want you to act in those situations or maybe even the surprises that might come your way how would God want you to respond as his child before we come to a uh, time of prayer together uh, we're going to say the nunc dimittis so let's join together in these words. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations 
and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. For our prayers this evening, we're going to uh, pray in what may be a familiar way to you. Um, and there are two ways you can think about it. You can think about it either as uh, being like ripples on a pond, where it starts from a central point and then gradually spreads outwards, or as an ever widening and increasing circle or sphere. Um, but we are going to start at the centre of that circle sphere where the ripple starts and we're going to pray for ourselves to start with. So let's pray together. Lord God, we pray for ourselves. We thank you that you have adopted us as your children. And we pray for all those things that are currently on our hearts and minds, for those decisions we have to make, for those things that we know are coming up during our weeks, Father, we thank you that you know them already, that you will be in those things, and we pray that you would help lead and guide us, that we would live as your children, acting and living in the way that you want us to live. Amen. And we pray for our loved ones, our friends, those that we hold close to us. Lord God, we pray for our families, for our friends, for those that we hold near and dear to us. And we know that not all of them will be going through easy times at the moment, that there will be some who are struggling either because of sickness, because of other pressures. Father, we pray for those that we know and love, that they would come to know you if they don't know you already, that those who do know you would walk ever closer with you. And we pray that as we see them or speak to them or even simply think about them and pray for them, that you would guide us to say the right things, to do the right things, to be salt and light in their lives. Amen. Now moving outwards again, we think about those uh, communities that we are part of, whether it's our neighbourhood, our work or our schools, our church. So we'll pray for them now. Lord God, we thank you for those larger communities, groups, networks that we are part of. We pray for those in our neighbourhoods who live on the same streets as us, whether we know them well, know them by name, or maybe don't even know them at all. We pray that over this week you would bless them and that you would use us to bless them as well. We pray for our colleagues at work, for those that we may see at the school gate. And we pray for all those in our church and in our parish. Father, whatever difficulties may be being faced, that you would shine your light and your love into those. And for all the good times as well, Father, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Now moving a step out again, widening it a little more, we pray for our town, 
for our county, for our nation and for the Church of England. So let's pray for them now. Father, we pray for our town, for our county, our nation, all those who lead us, for councillors, for ministers, for our church leaders. Father, we pray that you would give them a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of discernment, that they would govern and lead wisely and diligently. That they would put others' needs before their own. And in those situations where it might be difficult to lead, we pray that they would have the right support around them to be able to lead well. And now we move to the widest circle, praying for the world. And there may be particular places or countries or situations that you have on your heart. But we're going to pray for our mission partners. Thinking tomorrow particularly about Mission Monday and uh, the Girls Thorpe family who are in Japan. But also for those places where there is conflict and war or oppression and persecution. So let's pray together. Lord God, we pray for our world, the world that you so love, that you created and want to save and repair. Father, particularly we pray for those places where war and conflict have ravaged the land, ravaged people's lives have left people destitute and homeless. We pray for the end of those conflicts. And we also pray for places of, of persecution and oppression, whether it is religious or political, to do with race or gender, or even just having different opinions. Father, we pray that you would bring understanding, tolerance, unity and peace to all those places. And finally, we thank you for our mission partners. We pray for them, that you would continue to uphold and strengthen them and particularly tomorrow as we think of the Girls Thought family in Japan, we thank you for them in that place. We pray that those things they are working on for your kingdom would be fruitful and that they would be a real blessing to all the people of Hanamaki. Amen. And so now we join all of our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we come to the blessing. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the watchmen look for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. So may the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us 
and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace.